Right then, good morning. So I've just got up and been greeted to a text from my mate saying, sorry Andy, it's been snowing today, so I won't be coming diving. So it looks like today I'm gonna to be making a video about my first solo dive on my new JJ. So I've got wrapped up warm, I've got woolly hat on straight away, I've got my lifer shirt and I've got a few other bits to put on before we go. I've got some porridge I've just made, I'm gonna make a cup of tea, get some warmth in me. But before we start, let's go and have a look at what the weather's like, because it's not brilliant, let's, let's just say. So in my garage, you can see everything's lined up, ready to go, hung up, drying, getting warm. All my kit's ready, laid out, and outside, it's pretty remarkable compared to what just today. But, you know, been harping on about how cold I get for quite a while now, took loads of advice, got loads of new kit, and tried to make videos on how to stay warm. So hopefully my new Nolan Diver undersuit, the heated electrical vest, the quark undersuit that I've got, and the neoprene dry suit that I was really lucky enough to be given by Northern Diver to help me keep warm whilst I was on my JJ course will help me. So I've got a bowl of, um, Hope so simple. I've got a brew on the go here. I've got my fourth element gulper flask. That'll do me on the way up. And I've got my nice, everyone's seen it before, Zoomy J mug full of tea. And then we'll get on the road. So let's see what's happening. Right, so I've got here, I've got all my layers on. It's not half as cold as it was at home. There's no snow on the ground whatsoever. I'm sweating my knackers off. And like I said, my buddy Barry, or Danger Barry, now known, now to always be known as Barry Letdown, hasn't turned up, won't be turning up. My wife's going to drive all the way from Wigan, so it's another 40 minute drive for her both ways to come and drop my GoPro batteries off so I can make this video. So I definitely need a thumbs up from my wife. So, like I said, we're going to do a solo dive today because I've got nobody to dive with. And I am a qualified solo diver through Scuba Diving International. And with that comes this checklist. Okay, so it's not just a checklist that you just go through in your head and go, yeah, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. It's a tick checklist. So almost like a buddy check, you show them whatever you're checking, you do the same with this checklist. So the first one would be gas volume. So you'd actually look at your SPGs and have a look at them and say, yes, there's enough gas for this dive, tick. Tick it off. So right, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get my kit on. May as well get ready and get in the water, aren't we? Because it's not gonna get any warmer. Barry's not going to turn up, but my wife might with the GoPro batteries. So if I get squared away now and get in the water, it's going to have a look what it's doing. I'll take my, um, well, I'll take, if I take my bailout cylinder down, we can go down and have a look at the water and see what it's doing. But we're at Cape and Ray now. It's looking gleaming, the water. There's no one in the water yet. It's looking pretty clear. Look at that. I just made some ripples around the other side, dropping my cylinder in. But I'm sure it's going to be all right, this. It may be cold though. I don't think there's any fish. There's a cafe. Oh, you've got a nice new jetty on here as well. This is, is better, isn't it? It's right, slipping clear. <sighs> See what water temperature is. Cold. It's flipping, flipping cold. So now I'm back at the van. I'm going to do a pre-breed. Start by checking that the system's working. So I'm looking for the three amber flashes here to show me that I'm at set point 0 0.7. And then I'm going to check up the primary controller. All three oxygen cells should be reading there or thereabouts of 0 0.7. You see they're all, as I start breathing off the loop, they'll start coming into line and they should all stay. Now after three minutes, and I'm happy with that, that they've all sort of maintain that set point I'll start by adding some oxygen from the manual lag valve on the O2 side that then we should see that all three oxygen cells start to creep up so now as I'm breathing that oxygen through the loop you see that the set point start to rise so what will happen is the solenoid won't kick in in the O2 and it will just allow me to metabolize that back down after a minute I'll be happy with that as long as it's settled so the next part of this test is to use the MAV on the diluent side and add a couple of squirts of diluent in there which should reduce the partial pressure of oxygen down to well below 0.7 which is the ideal which is what we've set we want to breathe from so as you can see now it's going to start to crash as I breathe the gas through the loop and it mixes in and gets diluted you can see it's getting down to 6 point, uh, 0.62 0.61 but what will happen is the oxygen sensors will read that and tell the O2 
solenoid to kick in some oxygen, which as you can see now has brought it back up to just about 0.7, which is ideal. So we've got to pass off that. So give yourself an okay. So now I've gone through my checklist. So I've looked through that checklist, made sure everything's working as it should be, make sure I've got everything I should have, so spur mask, spur computer, the SMB, I'll let someone know. As the guys are diving inside of me, I'm gonna get in with them now, so I'll probably they'll know when they get out that I will be out about the same time as them. And if not, there's something probably up. So I'm gonna finish off, get my kit on, get my hood on, get my gloves and make my way to the water. See you in a bit. So now you can see I'm just on the descent and I'm not gonna lie, this new dry suit, whilst it's really warm, is a neoprene one and I'm so not used to diving in a neoprene suit. So trying to get down and trying to find the balance and relieve the pressure, you've got so many other things going on, so much extra kit around you. It's pretty awkward and uncomfortable to start with, but the dive gets better. So bear with me, I'm almost down now, just clearing my ears, letting a bit of gas out my nose just to help me on the descent. So now I've got down to the bottom and we're about 15, 16 metres of water here. Those of you who've dived Cape Rail recognise this is the oil rig and behind that's mounted a small plane. So I'm going to make an attempt now to do a bit of a, a, a bit of an ascent and just go through this hole. So remembering to try and bleed a bit of gas out of your suit, breathe out your nose just before you start the ascent and then when your gas does expand it's usually pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is try and approach it without crashing into it, which looks like I'm probably going to back in there and then pull myself over get yourself in that hole and then try and drop back down usually there's quite it's quite a few nice perch down here certainly in the sort of frame at the bottom that's missing so hopefully we'll get some of them on on camera so hopefully you can notice there's a massive sound difference to an open circuit diver that certainly with a GoPro you can't really hear much noise there might be a little bit from the surface but there's certainly not an awful lot for me you now. What I'm really trying to focus on is maintaining that stability that I would have had as a side mount or even back mount diver. Really trying to control my fin kicking, which I'm not gonna lie, it's still very difficult. I'm only on about 12 dives now with my rebreather and with this drive suit. So, you know, I'm getting there, but it's a work in progress. So as you come out the back of that container from underneath the plane, Hopefully you should find this plank and this takes you on to the next feature that's underwater and it's called the pod snap, it's quite a big boat and if you're quite confident there's a few little sort of climb swim throughs or little sort of cheeky bits that you can have a mess around with so if you find this plank it takes you straight up to the boat which you'll see shortly. So now we're coming on to the sort of starboard side of the pod snap that's touching the deck and if you just see there, there's a tail just nipping over the top, that was a sturgeon which there's quite a few of them in here. So I'm going to nip around this other side and hopefully we'll catch up with it. Uh, uh, I've just seen the sturgeon, so let's go down and try to find it. There it is. <laughs> So here's another problem for me now, it's going up, so on an ascent I've got to try and dump gas out my loop and out my suit to see how we get on. What I've just realised in the nick of time is trying to go over and to the left of this mound, so I've decided to just sort of sneak around there and you can just see its tail drifting over that way, rather than following it over the top and then have to faff and lose loads of gas. If I sneak around this way I might just catch it, there it is. So now them sturgeon have gone off doing whatever they want to do and now I'm back at the port side of the, the pod snap. We're going to have a quick sneaky look around. I don't really feel confident enough to be going reaching around there, it's quite tight. I would do any, any other kit but not on this while it's so new and to be fair I've been in 100 times before, there's nothing much to see but there's plenty to, to scrabble around if it's new to you. Uh, it's quite cheeky and it's always worth having a buddy or at least having a, a method of carrying your cylinder 
that you can detach quite easily. So sideman is perfect for this. So we're coming now up on the, the sort of rear part of the deck and looking over, this is the old mast. Now this is a good, a good way of finding your way. So if you follow this along now, in front of that, on the left hand side, you should just see coming into focus um, an old Volkswagen Beetle, my, one, one of my favorite old cars. So when I first dived Cape and Ray and came across this Beetle, I actually owned the same car. So I was like cheekily looking around to see if there's any parts spur, but to be fair, there's nothing worth having on this. Proper wreck. So what we do come across on the quarry bed quite a lot are these sort of pock marks all over the sort of silt and they're from the, where the sturgeon feeds they have quite a distending mouth that reaches into the soil and, and picks out sort of little bits of food sources mussels and things like that and that's what is causing these so just on the brow here i noticed the silt seemed to be quite kicked up but i hadn't seen any divers so i was quite right in thinking there's a sturgeon there feeding you can see it's sucking up its mouth's reaching down chewing up whatever and kicking it out for its gill cases but as soon as it sees me obviously I've got a nice big bright light and a big orange beard it, it doesn't want to hang around does it so I'll give it a follow see what's going on What I found was quite good practice in following this is as it changed its elevation in the water column, so did I. But unlike on normal open circuit scuba where you can just do that, it's so much harder as a closed circuit diver. So I've got to constantly keep keeping the optimal uh, breathing loop. I've got to keep gas in or out of my wing on my dry suit. So now you can see he's going on a big rise here. So this is particularly tricky for me. So quite quickly I got on it dump a bit of gas out through my nose to start with, some out of my arm with my dry suit and then see if I can get rid of some on the way up out of the mouth. But you see it's quite got quite far away from me here because it is quite a tricky manoeuvre for me. So if I do it nice and slow and controlled, it's always the best way in it. So looking at my backup computer, you can see we're at 45 minutes into the dive now, at a set point of 1.3, so my NDL is still at 99 and that hasn't moved. So now I'm going to start my ascent and start moving up to roughly around 10 metres and we'll find the dive bell and then from there what we'll do is we'll start to just gradually work our way back up to roughly about 6 metres where the training platforms are for the newer divers and then just hang around in the shallows, get my safety stop nipped and then that's it, home for tea and medals. So now we're in the shallows, 3 or 4 metres of water, after my safety stop I turned my set point back to 0.7, that's so I don't use a pour 2 because it doesn't need to be at 1.3 at this depth, 
and I'm just going to mooch around the shallows. I tend to hang around here on open circuit with my camera. There's always plenty of big fish and I think somebody's emptied their garden pond into here recently because these are quite new, these koi carp. This, this beautiful orange and black koi just becomes even more photogenic as, as it realises I'm no threat but obviously I'm not making any sound that's frightening it so as you can see it'll just keep creeping around and let me get closer and closer without being spooked which on open circuit it'll be off like a flash. So I've had to dub over this because I think my GoPro got distracted by the state of that bogey I'm going to have to side of my lip. Anyway, we had a great dive, it was 67 minutes in total with an average depth of about 15 metres and max depth of 18. Water temperature wasn't too bad, a nice balmy 7 degrees, it was a great dive. So since I got home, I got all my kit out, rinsed everything like my dry suit down, hung it up to let it dry out. Stripped the working parts of my rebreather out so as they can dry off. So that's like the O2 sensors and the solenoid because they get quite moist with the condensation through respiration. Rinsed out the inflate and exhale hose because that gets quite minging, as does the exhale uh, counter lung. So it's always a good idea to, with fresh water just to put a hose pipe in there, rinse it through a couple of times just to get rid of any of the condensation build up because bacteria can go in there and it can get quite nasty. I've put on my kit away now, let it dry and Hopefully it'll be good to dive another day. I've then come up here in the editing room or office, whatever you want to call it. I usually record the podcast or do any more editing of any videos we make. And I've put together this short video, obviously you've seen. The idea being is to show my progression as a, a rebreather diver. It's probably the hardest configuration change that I've gone through from single to twin to side mount and now to back mounted rebreather. There's a lot to think about, especially if you're going to start getting a camera, whether it be just a video camera like a GoPro that's on a sort of selfie stick like I've had today or if I start taking in my proper camera that's you know all singing and dancing sort of job so there's quite a lot to think about so for me using these winter months whether people want to come diving with me or not I'm going to use those months to fight against the elements fight against you know physics of the different dry suit and the different configuration to try and get myself in a position where come the summer when I can be really comfortable I get my camera out and start using the stable platform that I've created to take some better video, better shots. But certainly for this, I wanna try and explain to you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and when I'm doing it. And then you can see and be more informed about what rebreather divers do, and you can appreciate just how hard they're working to maintain a very stable platform at all times, whilst inspiring the best level of oxygen as they can to prolong their bottom time and reduce the decompression penalty and ascent time to get out of the water because everyone wants to get back for a brew, don't they? So if you have enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, certainly for out of appreciation of my wife to drive in all the way up there in this crap weather when she could have just been with her feet up on the couch, definitely need a thumbs up. If you're not already, please give us a subscribe, that way you can see all of our content really easily. And then if you want to leave us a comment, whatever it is, I'll always get back to you, so make sure you do. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one. Insta.